Okay, so uh, here's a demonstration uh, via Geometry Sketchpad of the Law of Cosines. And there's quite a bit going on, so I'll do my best to explain it as it goes. But it, it kind of walks you through it. So you start with this triangle, ABC, and the opposite A is little a, opposite so, uh, angle C is side little c, and opposite uh, angle B is side little b. Uh, don't worry about this yellow piece at this time. It says, start by constructing a square overlapping the triangle using C. So C is going to be the side of a square. So we'll draw that, and it's going to go over top of this triangle so it overlaps it. Okay, now construct a square using side B. So we're going to make a square over here. Okay, and we're going to color it blue. That's, that's the little square off of side B, or it's a medium square. And then we're going to construct a parallelogram, and it's already been drawn here in yellow. And that parallel is going to, parallelogram is, is going to go right alongside A here. So it's right there now. It's in white now there. You should have stayed yellow, but... Okay, it says construct a square using a side of the previous parallelogram. So we've got the parallelogram. We want to construct a square right up here. Okay? So then one thing you remember in the parallelogram, this side is side A. This side is also a length of A. Whatever length this is, which is B from the square is also B along here. So just remember that in the parallelogram, the opposite sides are congruent. So there's that square. We're going to color it blue because it's a square, but it's off of A. Instead of doing it off of here, we're going to do it off of here, but it's A right here. And then we're going to construct another parallelogram by connecting the corners of A and B squares. So here's the B square, here's the A squared, and we're going to make a parallelogram right here. And just be aware, this parallelogram has a side of A and a side of B. Our original parallelogram has a side of A and a side of B. So that's the first part of it. So we've got this two parallelograms that are the same, two different size squares. Okay, so we're on the next page, and it colored it yellow properly. It says, let the region 1 equal the area of the square from side C, so here's region 1, of the original triangle. Let region 2 equal the sum of all the colored polygons. So region 2 is yellow plus blue plus yellow plus blue. And you've got the pieces sticking outside the original region 1, which is C by C here. It says, what is the relationship between the areas of region 1 and region 2? explain why. Well, what I'm going to do is I'm going to slide some of these pieces to fill in the white ones and you'll see what answer you'll see the answer here. So, I took a piece of yellow and a piece of blue. So, the yellow up here got put here, the blue here got put here and oh, it filled it in. The yellow that was left sticking out here got put over here and the blue piece sticking out here got put in here. And it turns out that all the that the two regions are equal. The yellows plus the blues equals the C by C square. In terms of A, B, and C, what are the areas of the two shaded squares and the large square from side C? They're both equal. So, I'm going to look at this parallelogram here. I know that this is B squared, this blue one, with this piece, and that this is A squared when you add this piece. And then I have two of these parallelograms that, take, that represent the yellow pieces. Okay, And you need to know that the area of a parallelogram is base times height. So it could be base times height. Okay. So region 1 is this square here is C squared. Region 2 is A squared plus B squared plus the two parallelograms areas. 
And this parallelogram has a base times a height. This is the same parallelogram has a base times the same length height. So we have two of them. So there's the, the small blue square, if you look at the equation, the medium blue square, and then you've got the two parallelograms, base times height, and they're equal to C by C. We don't really like H being there because it's hard to figure out. So we'd like to get rid of it. And so we notice that there is a right triangle right here. This means we can use trigonometry to find H. Okay? So let's find the angle between A and H. It's right here. We'll call that theta. We call that theta right there. Let's find the height of the parallelogram with theta. So we're going to need H and A. So this is the right angle. So A is the hypotenuse and H must be the adjacent. So theta will equal the angle between A and H and what can be write an angle that can be used to find the height of the thing. And we already said this is adjacent, this is hypotenuse, even though this is the height, don't let's not confuse height with hypotenuse. This is the height. The 90 degree angles right here, so opposite is hypotenuse. Adjacent hypotenuse is ka or cosine. So let's write that down. The cosine of the angle is h divided by a and when you solve for h you get a times the cosine of theta. But that leaves another problem for us. We got rid of h but what is the value of theta? And what we do know is that it forms a linear pair with this angle a c b right here where the arrow is look on the thing right by the capital C it forms a linear pair so we know that theta is 180 it's theta plus angle C right here equal 180 so if you subtract it you can get theta so let's substitute that in, that in for there and we'll also put it in the equation so remember our equation there's H and we know that the height is going to be a times, so we had it right here, look in this, this level right here, I, that, but when I change theta to that, it gives me that. So I'm going to go to the next page here. So we have this from the previous page. We need to substitute in for h in the previous equation. So we're going to put this into the equation. So there was the equation. So this, well this was our equation from a two, couple screens back. We got rid of h and put in there. And it gets to there. Okay, so that's what we have. We went from this, put it into the equation. And we, we got that. Uh, it keeps doing the wrong order. This is the law of cosines, but you ordinarily see it written in a slightly simplified form. So, this is the law of cosines. We don't usually write it like this. So we're going to need to use some information that we already know. Now, this is a little bit tricky, and you'll have to check it on your calculator. But if you have an angle, and you subtract it from 180, and then take the cosine of it, it will be the same as the original angle, but it will be the negative of the cosine. So let's try 30 degrees. The cosine of 30 degrees, if you look at your unit circle, is root 3 over 2. If you subtract 30 from 180, you get 150. And remember, the cosine of 30 degrees reflects over the y-axis on your unit circle to get the cosine of 150 degrees, but it's in the negative part for x. It's in the second quadrant. Reflecting over the y-axis changes the sign, so you get the negative of it. Okay. Well, that's important here because we can change this right here with something like this.
So I'm going to substitute cos. I'm going to change this to theta. From I'm going to change this to angle C now. So if you put a C here and a C here where theta is, so if you use this equation and put C and C, then if you want to change 180 minus C like we've got, then we'll change it to cosine C, but we'll have to make it negative. Well, when we do that, this whole thing right here becomes negative, and we get the cosine C. And this is the law of cosines. So we use the we use some tricky stuff, and this trig identity isn't something that I expect you to know, but it is something we could figure out. A little bit of thinking, we have the law of cosines there. So that is a visual demonstration. There are other proofs for the law of cosines. If you Google it, you can find other more algebraic proofs, but this is a geometric proof. So thank you for trying to get through that. But this is one form of the law of cosines.